Hi, for those that's joined, my name's Martin, and we're going to take a second step look at our tenant example. Um, but we're going to go further than just creating extra windows in GP. We're going to start building a brand new entities and expand on that initial example um, and and build some forms in this scenario. So stick with me. Over the next 10 minutes, you'll learn how to build brand new screens in GP. So in the last session, we got to this area here where we'd created a brand new window tied to customers. Now we want to start expanding on that. One of the things that, that frustrated me is that we've got a field here called property name. Um, and that's free text. Now we've got a set list of properties that we want to capture some information about. Um, and one little free text field is probably not good enough for what we want to do. So going back into Extender, we're going to start expanding on this concept. This time, rather than creating a window, inside my tenant solution, I'm going to create a brand new form. So to do that, I type new, and we're going to call this property. We'll call this the property property name. Um, that's the name of the form. We want to get the the property ID and the name captured on this screen. Now it's then asking me what data would I like to capture against the property. Now this new concept for GP is just like a vendor or a customer or a fixed asset but it's our one called property which has got specific information um, about what we're storing here. So the things against the property, the first thing we might want to know is the address. So we'll put address here. Typical type of address one, that's going to be a short string field. I'm going to have address two. I'll make that a short string field. Then we can have the city. Um, and we can continue to, to fill out those fields. We'll have a state as well. And they'll all be nice short string fields. Now there's other things we need to know about that. And that might be the, um, the number of units inside this property development. Now that is just going to be a number because it's always going to be a numeric value. We might want to track over on the right hand side here the um, type. Now we'll make that a list. And inside of that list we can add those values. Now this might be an over 50s development. It might be an apartment. It might be a golf view. And we can define exactly what type of development we're talking about. Um, and we're now customizing this to suit. Um, we may want to really know the property manager. So we'll attach that on here. Now what I might do with this one is make this a lookup. So we're going to make this a lookup to the GP concept of employees because we know we pay all our property managers. So we'll do a lookup to employee. Now that already exists and so that's all I need to do in that definition to have a lookup there to the property manager. We might want to specifically have a phone number so we can call that property manager. And we'll make that a phone type field. And I can continue to build this up and store all sorts of information about this generic property um, that we're going to be working with. So let's take that as an example. I'm going to save it. And what we've done now is built a brand new concept inside GP called property. If I was to use this form, now I can also go forward and add that to a menu, which will be the next thing I do. So I can then go cards, properties and build up from there. But let's take the form and the quick way to access it is to right click and say use that form. And this is a brand new Dynamics GP screen called Properties. So we'll create a new property called Parkside Villa. We know that as Parkside by short. And we can say that's at 12 West, West Street. And that's in Chicago. There's 24 available properties. It's a over 50s development. Property manager happens to be Angela, and this is how we get hold of Angela. And we've filled out that screen. Now the beauty here is not only is every field on that screen customizable and user-defined, but the screen itself is customizable and user-defined. So the screen didn't exist until I invented it only a few minutes ago. Um, now I want to take this one a bit further though, because 
we need to go back to that window we had before. Let me go back to the window. Oops, not that window there. This window down here. Um, where we were capturing our tenant capturing our tenant information. Now we had a field on there called property name which is a short string. Now I need to change that one now because we don't want that to be a short string. We want that to become a lookup and a lookup to go and grab the actual property. Now you'll notice there's a property screen here called property name um, that we can use. So I'm changing the field type here as to where that looks to. So well, let's save that window. And now we're starting to build up a full mini application. If we look at our forms again and we use that one, okay, you'll see we've got one record in here called Parkside Villas. Let's add a second record and this could be the Golf Views Development. Um, I'll skip the address information. You've, you've seen how that works. We'll simply mark that as being a Golf Development um, and we'll save that master file now for another property. So back on our window, if we bring up Kimberly Johnson, when we're looking at her tenant information now, just that was already open, let's just open her up again. And we bring up Kimberly from additional tenant information. I've got a sensible message that said, hey, that property name doesn't exist because it's now trying to validate it against a valid list of properties. So we've now got the same information, but my property is a lookup, and inside that lookup, I've got two options, one for golf views and one for Parkside Villa. So if we take the Parkside Villa, what we're now able to do is drill back from this window and see all the details about the Parkside Villa property. So we're building up a GP application that's got not only windows, but it's got detail forms behind it. And you can create one, or 10 or 50 of these setup screens um, and then use those setup screens in places that you'd like to. Now in this scenario I want to go one step further. It's nice that we know that this property was inside the Parkside Villa development but inside there we know we've got 24 units so I need to start capturing details about each one of those units so we can track those inside GP and build this application to what it needs to be. So I'm going to build a new form. Let's go back to Extender and forms and we're going to create a brand new form here called apartment. Ooh, let's spell it correctly. Now what I want to do here is say these apartments are tied to a property. So I'm going to use an existing lookup here of property because that's the one we've created. And I also then want my secondary ID to be apartment. So we're going to start linking a multi-key multi environment here called a property um, and, a, um, and an apartment where they're linked together. Let me put in here property. A few too many times, we'll call that property as well. So what I get to do now is start putting in specific information about the apartment um, that we want to work with here. So the first field will be number of bedrooms. Nice and simple. Now we'll make that a list. And the values inside that list are pretty simple. We have up to five bedroom apartments in this development. We can have here a field called aircon and heating. Now again, this one we're going to make a checkbox and that's simple, it's yes or no. Um, and we can continue to add all the fields that are relevant um, to this apartment. Oops. that a checkbox as to whether it's got car parking. Um, one thing we forgot to put on here was bathrooms, so let's stick that over on the right here. How many bathrooms does it have? People like to know. We'll make that a list as well. Add to our list um, and nobody has more than three bathrooms in this environment. So we can start to build up here as you say all the details about a particular apartment 
inside this particular property. Um, and we can start getting clever now and saying, who is um, the customer that's renting this apartment? Or um, who's the current tenant? Um, so we could add those sorts of fields to this screen and continue to build up a very complex application to track all the information that GP doesn't store, but can now that you've got extender. So let's take a look at what we've done. So we saw we had a property form and now we have an apartment form. So let's take a look at that one. And this is saying, based upon my property, Parkside Villa, inside of there, we're going to have unit one. Unit one has two bedrooms and it has aircon. It doesn't have a car park, but it does have two bathrooms. And we'll save that. We can now set up unit two. And so unit two is one bedroom, one bathroom, but it does have a car park and it does have aircon. And we can start to build up an entire set of master files here. Unit three is a big one. It's got four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and it's got aircon and car parking. Again, the important thing here is every field on each of these windows is user defined by you. So if you don't like what you build, it's your own fault. Um, and this is how you build up an extender application. So we've now added forms to what we've been doing um, to those windows to build up that complete application. So one of the things I might want on this apartment screen, if we were to come back and develop it further, and that might be the status. And the status is going to be a list. And we've got vacant. Um, or least and so that's a new field we're now going to have against each apartment so we know whether it's currently vacant or whether it's not um, and we could have a field here for the tenant and the customer now I, w I won't go and build all those screens but you can visualize how that would work so that's the, the step two um, of Extender, is building your own entities, your own concepts that don't exist in GP, but then the ability to link those entities to things that happen inside GP, like we've got there on the window, and linking that to the tenant. Thank you very much, and stay tuned for further updates on Extender, and, and watch session three to see how you can go to the next step.